So, Gennady Golovkin is successful beating Osamu uh, Damu in defence of his WBA middleweight championship of the world. The man referred to as Triple G continued his long run of knocking people out to TKO win over Adamu in the seventh was impressive, but not overly impressive. And I know a lot of GGG fans will probably hate me for what I'm saying here, but at this point in time, I'm not totally convinced on GGG. And here's my point. GGG, yes, he punches very hard. Yes, he knocks people over. Yes, he closes the distance and everyone talks about him closing the distance down. Um, and it's not that I look at that, you know, impresses me. You know, when you can do that against the top, top fighters in the world, then I, I'll get up and look and say, you know, he's done it against a world-class opponent, somebody who's who can throw punches back at him, can take a good punch and can move a bit. And Adamu... For all the commentators saying GGG this and GGG that and every other thing was GGGG, um, you know, I was getting pretty sickened by listening to this because Adamo was doing some pretty good things. I noticed when Adamo started to move laterally and pump out a double jab, at one point, I think around the fifth round, he backed GGG up. Now, I want to see an opponent, I want to see somebody who fights GGG, who's got good footwork, and has got enough power for him to respect coming forward. In other words, a fighter that can push him back. What's he like when he's put back under pressure? What's he like when he's got big punches being thrown back at him? What's he like when he's getting hit by a stinging counter puncher? These are all questions that need to be answered by GGG. And as of yet, he hasn't done that. Um, and even tonight, he kept walking forward quite, you know... You know, just walking forward and taking punches and, you know, no sort of defense, no head movement. It's like just walking forward and walking a guy down. Well, you can do that at that level against guys who don't have a big punch. But when you're fighting guys who have good punching power or, or respectable punching power that can drop you, um, you'll fight differently. Because then you have to start fighting the back foot. You can't, you, you know, you have to think about the punches coming in. And to the fight tonight, and I've seen GGG a few times now, and he doesn't have much regard for defence. And that, to me, is a problem. And you might say, well, you know, he's knocking guys over. Yes, he's doing that now, but this is not the level he's going to stay at. As he moves up to the next level, that's the question. Can he still do what he's doing now against the very best in the division? Um, the other thing I noticed about GGG, he is a fighter that needs... Um, to hold his feet and throw punches. He needs to stand in front of you and let his punches go in that sense. Um, if you look at someone like Ko uh, Kovalev, Kovalev's a guy that his pa I think Kovalev's a bigger puncher than GGG. Um, I've seen Kovalev knock guys down with a jab. I've seen him knock guys down with right hands and left hooks. And, you know, these guys are pulling away from punches, right? GGG, from what I'm seeing so far, is a guy that has to walk you down plant his feet and let punches go. Now, when you're talking about guys like Floyd Mayweather and Andre Ward, they're not going to allow you this, the time to land them sort of punches. And even when you are trying to land those punches, you're more likely going to walk into two and three punches at a time. And you'll be fighting their fight. So GGD is looking good against guys who, at this point in time, he's meant to knock over. We are yet to see what GGG does against the guy that's a mover, a real mover and can punch. Not a mover who's got, who's a, a, a powder punch puncher. You know, we're looking at a guy, we're looking for a guy who's going to have a bit of good dig and good moving. And the guy who I think would give GGG a lot of problems, a lot of people would argue with me on this, is Martinez. Maybe not Martinez now, because Martinez is a lot older now and with all the injuries he's had. But he's the sort of guy I think that would give GGG nightmares. Um, because of his ability to move, throw punches from weird angles, not stay in the same spot all the time. Um, but, you know, again, Martinez has been dropped, but Martinez does carry, um, he's a heavy puncher. It's been, you know, he can drop you and he can knock you out. So he would be a very interesting fight uh, for GGG. I'm not convinced the guys that stand in the center of the ring and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him are going to stand as much chance against a guy that's on the move, a counter-puncher. So a guy fight with Andre Ward, I don't think on, I don't think GGG can beat Andre Ward because Andre Ward 
has got many different facets to his game. He's not only uh, a defensive wizard, which a lot of people don't like to, or block punches. He sets you up punches as a counter punches, sets traps for you. So GGG may, as people would say in a fight, would close you down with all this distancing, close you down. But as he's about to close you down, Andre Ward's gone. Or as you're about to close him down, you're getting hit with a counter punch. Or you're getting hit with three or four punches. You know, so these are things that people have to consider. And as well, D GGG, as I said before, his defence is leaky. So, while people are hyping up GGG against second tier opposition, let's just see what this man does when he's backed up and he's having to chip punches and has to change his game plan. For me, he's a good fighter and he looks like a star for the future. But to stick him in the ring with someone like Andre Ward, who is a proven quality oper operator at the highest level, and Floyd Mayweather, again, proven at the highest level, I don't know just yet. Let me know what you guys think. And congratulations once again to GGG. I'm out.